Hi everyone, hope you are doing well. Today I am going to demonstrate the morphology of the maxillary permanent first molar. So the maxillary permanent first molar, which is a, these are, no, these are the maxillary molars. One first molar, second molar, and third molar. Similarly, on the left side, maxillary first molar, second molar, and maxillary third molar. These teeth basically they assist the mandibular molars in the function in the grinding function. The permanent first molars they appear in the oral cavity by the age of around the age of six years, and it emerge at, at that time these teeth emerge posterior to the deciduous maxillary second molars. These are the largest tooth in the maxillary arch. It, these teeth have, have, have four well-developed cusps, one, two, three, four. In addition to that, these teeth have a S3 cusp on the palatal aspect. These teeth have three well-developed roots, two buccal and one palatal root. The maxillary first molar of the right side and this is the first molar of the left side so the maxillary first molar it has two buccal cusps this cusp is the mesiobuccal cusp and this cusp is the distobuccal cusp the, the portion of the mesiopalatal and the distopalatal cusps are also visible from the buccal aspect. In between the two buccal cusps, the mesiobuccal and the distrobuccal cusp, a developmental groove is present. The mesial cusp is more broader. You can see the mesial the mesiobuccal cusp is more broader as compared to the distrobuccal cusp. This is the root trunk and then there is a division into three roots. You can see a developmental groove on the buccal side, on the root trunk. This is the mesial root that curves in a distal direction. This is the distal root and this root in the background is the palatal root. The palatal root is the longest while the mesial mesiobuccal and the distrobuccal roots are nearly equal in length. The cervical line has a convexity and the convexity is towards the root surface. The palatal aspect. From the palatal aspect, the mesiopalatal cusp and the distopalatal cusps are visible and no buccal cusps are visible. The mesiopalatal cusp is larger as compared to the distopalatal cusp. In between the two cusps, the mesiopalatal and the distopalatal palatal cusp, a, a palatal groove is present. There is a fifth cusp or cusp of carabili is associated with the mesiopalatal cusp. All the three roots are visible. This is a palatal root, this is the distal root and this is the mesial root. So all the three roots are visible from the palatal aspect. From the mesial aspect, the mesiobuccal cusp and the mesiopalatal cusp are visible. In addition to that, the cusp of carabelli is also visible from this aspect. This ridge is the mesial marginal ridge. This is the mesiobuccal root. The mesiobuccal root because it is broad and flat, it hides the distal root. So the distal root is not visible from the mesial aspect. The cervical line is irregular with convexity towards the crown surface. The palatal root is longer, but it is it appears pointed from this aspect. The buccopalatal dimension of the crown is less on the distal surface therefore you can see part of the buccal surface from the distal aspect.
the distal marginal which is present more, cer more cervically therefore you can see part of the occlusal surface from the distal aspect the, the curvature of the cervical line is less on the distal aspect the distrobuccal root is n slightly narrower on the distal side therefore you can see part of the mesial root from the distal aspect this is the occlusal aspect from the occlusal aspect you can see that the mesial side is more the dimension of the mesial side is more as compared to the distal aspect all four major cusps are visible plus the cusp of cerebelli are the fifth cusp this cusp is the mesiobuccal cusp, this cusp is the mesiopalatal cusp, distobuccal and distropalatal cusp. Among them, the mesiopalatal cusp is the largest cusp. There are certain fossas, for example, this is the oblique ridge running from the distrobuccal to the distopalatal to the mesiopalatal cusp, just mesial to this ridge there's a fossa and this is known as the central fossa distal to the tri to the oblique ridge there is another fossa that is known as the distal uh, that is known as the distal fossa there are two triangular fossas the one that is just distal to the mesial marginal ridge this fossa is known as the mesial triangular fossa and the fossa that is just mesial to the distal marginal ridge this is a fossa this fossa is known as the distal triangular fossa there, there are this is one is a central developmental groove and from central developmental groove this groove it emerge and this is known as the buccal developmental groove there's another groove that is associated with the distolingual with the distopalatal cusp and this is known as the palatal developmental groove.